I'm going to show you how to automate your Google Drive so that incoming files are sent to different AI agents for processing with updates from Telegram. Starting with the first step, monitoring your Google Drive account. Now, I just had Cursor create all this code for me. So I just used AI to basically create this Drive Monitor Python file. Now, it's specifically looking for a folder, any incoming files. It's going to let you know, and we can do something with that. The only other thing that you need to do is get the credentials.json file right over here. You're going to download that from Google once you give your account access to do something with Google Drive. I have a link in the description so that you know how to do that. It just takes a couple minutes. Then the next thing we need to do is actually create our crew AI flow so that we can route the files to do different things. Let's get on that now. For the second step, I created a folder called crew AI routing. I called crew AI create flow Google Drive flow. And this is going to create the flow necessary to route the files to different crews to process it. So as you can see, I, that was done. It took a few seconds to create the uh, the flow Google Drive flow. Now, if we open this up over here, we can see that it created a crew, a poem crew, and in this main Python file, this is our flow. This is how we're going to route different files. Then, in this example, they also show you how you can kick off a crew as part of this flow. Let's go ahead and modify this now. Okay, so let's explain what's happening here. At the start, we're going to decide based on the file that it downloaded from Google Drive or that was incoming, it's gonna decide whether it's a meeting, a project, a contract, or other. And we're gonna have a call to OpenAI to have it determine that and return that for us. So this code right here, this is just an OpenAI call and that is what's great about Flow that it does, not everything has to involve a crew. I just need a simple call to an API to let me know what the type is based on the file name. And then this is where the power comes in from the at router. So based on the, the return from the previous function, this is gonna tell me what the routing state was. So if that was a meeting, I'm gonna return meeting minutes. In this case, otherwise, everything else is gonna be a contract management, but this is where you can modify this for different types of files that you are expecting in your folder. So in the, if this was meeting minutes, I'm now gonna be listening for that and we're gonna begin the meeting minutes extraction, which means this is a WAV file or some MP3 or some file that is going to download that. We are going to transcribe that, and that transcription is going to be right here. This block of code is going to transcribe that using another OpenAI call. Once that happens, we are kicking off a meeting minutes crew. Now let's go ahead and look at this crew really quick. So within this crew, we have a meeting minute summarizer, a meeting minutes writer for two different agents, and then each of them have their own task. And they're essentially going to be getting the action items, the sentiment, and the summary from that transcription from the WAV file. And then we're gonna go ahead and send that back and then return that as a specific Google Drive output type, which means that we're using Pydantic to have a certain output every time. So we get the raw, the, the raw result, the file name, and then this is going to be the Telegram message that I want to send updating, say, hey, we got a new file, this is what it was. However, this was anything else, let's say it was contract management, well, we're gonna come down to the contract manager function, this is what this function is listening for that, then we're gonna begin the contract management extraction. Now here, I'm gonna show you this in just a minute. We'll actually use Llama Parse because it is very good, very good, and it's free for parsing PDFs. And then guess what? I have a contract management crew to handle that. And in this crew, I have a contract analyst and then a reporting analyst. And each of these has a specific task to handle that PDF and then send that back. And again, we have it returning a specific output for the Telegram message, the final summary, and the final name. But where does this start? Well, I have, but the overall, how this starts is I have a kickoff function. I have the flow here I instantiate. I give it the file name. That's all I give it is the file name. The response is kicking off. It's retrieving, it's doing one of these flows or one of the outputs from that flow. And then this is actually Airtable where what I wanna do with Airtable is I want to create that record into an Airtable so I know when it happened besides just getting the Telegram message. And then we are going to return that Telegram message to then be sent off to Telegram. And all of that is happening from this kickoff when it's checking every two seconds for a new file coming into that folder. And then we go ahead and send the Telegram message, which was the result, which we know we are sending this back, the Telegram message. And then the process is complete. And this is working behind the scenes anytime you upload a file to your Google Drive folder. And this is easily customizable for different types of folders or files that you are expecting to put into your folder.
Okay, so let's go through this step by step and see it in action and let's actually upload uh, new files as it is listening and waiting for something to happen. Okay, so right now I ran the Python drive monitor. It is says monitoring the new folder company files. So this my folder is company files and it's just monitoring for full or for files in that new folder. So let's go ahead and drop a new file in here so we can see what happens. So I'm just going to open up my finder. I have downloads here. Let's go ahead and do the earnings call. Okay, so this is a good one. So I have the earnings call dot wave. As you can see, it's uh, it's uploading it. So as soon as it's done uploading it, this is this is checking every two seconds. You can have it check for different inter intervals. Maybe you just want to have it check every minute. You know, maybe just once a day for new files. It just depends on what you is what you are doing and what the use case is for you. Okay, so this is almost done uploading. So it's finishing the upload, and as soon as this is here, within just a couple seconds, it says new file detected earnings call. Dot wave. So what you're going to see here is that's going to next determine what type of file it is. So retrieving types. So it kicked out the flow, retrieving the types. The file name is earnings call dot wave. So the routing type was meeting. So then it's beginning the meeting minutes extraction. And now what this is doing, uh, this is doing different chunks from the transcription because you know OpenAI's API call can't take can only take a certain amount of like size of the recording. So what I've done is I chunk it up into minutes at a time. So this is where it's chunking it every minute. It's doing a transcription, then the next one and the next one until, you know, all of these are done. Now this, this wave file is about almost three minutes long. So that's why there's going to be three different chunks. So here you can see uh, chunk one of three, chunk two of three, and then chunk three of three here. Okay. Then once that is done, we saw it's going to kick off the crew. Once it gets a transcription, it's going to send that transcription to the crew can go through go through the different agents as it's doing right here so we have the meeting minute summarizer once that is done it's going to you know all so it's going to be writing the different files to the crew so i have the summary.txt action items.txt and then there should be a sentiment.txt so there were three different tools that i gave that crew or for that agent and it's going to write them to the text file and then the meeting minutes summarizer is going to take that and send it off to the writer so the writer then summarizes everything that we did so here is the summarization. And then finally, once that was done, it returned the telegram message and said the telegram message has been sent. So as you can see here, new meeting minutes uploaded, earnings call that wave at 124 PM. And I also had it saved to the database table when after we kicked it off. So here, the last one, earnings call dot wave, the time was 124 PM to 15, 2025. That's awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the contractor as well. Let me go to Finder. Let me open up Finder. Let's go, this was example contract. So I'm gonna upload this. So let me take a second upload. This is a lot sooner. Yep, and it already detected a new file, example construction contract.pdf. It downloaded it, it's retrieving the file type. So the routing type is contract. So it knows that this is a contract. It's gonna begin the extraction. Now this is where Llama Parse comes in. I'm gonna show you Llama Parse after this is complete. And so you can so show you how to set it up because it is very simple to set up. Okay, so it parsed it. And now the contract management expert is going to take that, retrieve everything from that contract, kind of summarize and let me know all the different things that are a part of this contract. Then it's going to report that into a nicer into a nicer format for me. So then this is going to be end up being saved into the database table, just like it is here. So here's a, another example construction PDF at 1.29 p.m. And then it went ahead and sent me a telegram as well, letting me know, hey, there is a new contract that has been uploaded. And I know that this has also been saved. So I can come in here and I can just I can double click this, expand this. Then I could look at what uh, what was said in here and I could review this as well. Now, just to quickly go over Llama Parse, in order to use that, you have to go to Llama Cloud, sign up. And then on the left-hand side here, there is an API key. So once you sign up, you'll see this screen. Go to API keys on the left. Create an API key, right? I just created this um, just the other day. So once you create that, then if we go to the documentation, this kind of gives you some expectations of what you should see. And I got to say that this is, I've done complex uh, documents before with this that had tables with inside and graphs within inside of the PDF. And this is amazing. It really does a good job. This right over here, you can see this is the original document, right? This is the original document. You know, this is a graph. There's a lot going on here. And then what it does is it converts that into this markdown, which is much easier for the LLM to see. And that's the whole point. We want to keep the same data, but make it easier for the LLM to be able to see. Then I went over here to the Python start, and this is 
literally the code I used. However, I didn't, well, I didn't use the simple directory, but everything else is here the same. I'm going to show you. This is not exactly going to work with Crew AI. And the reason it's not going to work is because there is something with asynchronous happening that you need to allow this to be used asynchronously within the flow. So in order to get that to work, all I had to do was import nest async IO and then say nest async IO dot apply. And then this worked within the flow of Crew AI. And I will have a better explanation of this in my school community. If you come here to my templates, I will have these different templates for Crew AI. This will be here with a little better in-depth example of how each things works. And I'll have them separated out for you if you join my community. I'll have a link in the description. Right now there's a trial. Feel free to join. I'm here to help you. Don't let AI agents be hard. I'm going to make them easier for you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. I 